Hi, welcome to Woven Minis. I went to the Tank Museum the other day and obviously I bought some dinosaurs, as you do. Um, I saw these on the stand and I just couldn't resist. Um, familiar with Tamiya's work on tanks and planes and things like that, but not so familiar with the organics um, that they've done. And these uh, little set of dinosaurs and crocodile are just really nice. Um, they're actually pegged as uh, mostly being infants. Um, particularly the larger ones, which is handy because the scale is 1 to 35, which is a bit bigger than the, the scale you normally get for Warhammer or Dungeons and Dragons, a 28mm scale. Um, but because these are pegged as being uh, younger creatures, then actually they, they end up being a pretty good scale for using in those sort of games. So I thought I'd give them a quick go, um, a very quick and dirty bit of dry brushing, um, and get them ready for use in Dungeons and Dragons or uh, something like that. Um, in record time. So here we go. So I started off with the Parasaurolophus um, and cut it out. I got some new clippers from Tamiya. My old Games Workshop ones uh, snapped on me. Um, the spring inside snapped. And I was recommended to get the, um, the Tamiya ones and they're very good, uh, very precise. Um, get a nice clean cut. So <laughs> use that to clip the bits and pieces out, use the trusty Tamiya cement to glue it together. Now the plastic on these is fairly brittle if you're used to working with Games Workshop type plastic. This is quite thin, um, the edge is a little bit sharp and it can be quite brittle. Um, but they go together quite nicely. And in terms of sort of mould lines and cleaning up, they do need a bit of cleaning up. Um, I think I could have perhaps done a little bit more. Um, it's not so noticeable when you're just sticking them together, but once they're painted, you can notice the mould lines a little bit more on them. But I was a little bit conscious of not wanting to uh, to snap this slightly brittle plastic as I was um, cleaning it up. Um, but overall, yeah, they go together very quickly. There's not many pieces to each one, so very simple. Um, I've got my daughter to help me on this um, build because it's something quite easy that little hands can do as well. Um, so uh, I probably could have let her do a bit more than I did, um, to be honest. But yeah, she helped out and that was great. One of the things I like about this kit is that it includes a big old crocodile, which uh, although not a dinosaur itself, did live alongside dinosaurs in the Mesozoic. Um, I studied paleontology when I was at university, uh, did a degree in paleobiology and evolution uh, many, many years ago, uh, which was great fun. Um, so I really appreciate having this sort of Mesozoic Creatures box set, uh, which uh, I like the fact it includes an Archaeopteryx as well, which uh, although it looks a bit like a bird, it wasn't actually uh, a bird. Um, it was uh, around in the Jurassic um, and is a feathered dinosaur. But as we now know, there were lots of other feathered dinosaurs and it was some of those that evolved into birds as we know them today. Um, I've got quite a lot of other dinosaur models, um, particularly from the Drowned Earth miniatures game uh, and Alea Chronicles. I did the Kickstarter. Um, I think it's Olmec Games that makes that. Um, so he's made quite a few really cool metal dinosaurs. Um, so I've got a bunch of those to put together. I've also got some from Reaper, Reaper Bones, and also uh, there's a couple of D&D um, &D ones from uh, Nolza's Marvelous Miniatures. Um, so I've got quite a selection of dinosaurs, um, so I'm definitely looking to do something with them at some point in the future. Um, not just have them as display pieces, probably some sort of Dungeons and Dragons adventure, something like that. Um, but uh, we'll see, we'll see how that comes together. Anyway, I digress substantially from the point of the video, which is to focus on building these miniatures and painting them. So, uh, once they're all assembled, uh, I like to put them on bases. Um, I do like having the miniatures on bases, quite consistent bases. Um, I uh, I like the sort of slightly taller bases that Games Workshop do, rather than some miniatures games you get the really flat bases. Um, it's just a personal preference. I've used a number of different bases over the years. Um, some of my D&D miniatures and uh, Frostgrave things use Frotherheim bases from Femoris games. Some other things use other uh, scenic bases, but uh, I've got a lot of plastic bases from Games Workshop and here they are. So, uh, I've got a selection here and all I'm doing is trying to find the, the most appropriately sized base for the miniature. 
Um, I'm not worried about the rules and that kind of thing. You know, Warhammer has some specific rules around base sizes. So do most miniatures games. Infinity definitely does as well. Um, but I, for this, I'm just trying to get it to look nice. The crocodile, I'm struggling to decide whether to do them on a big round base or on an oval base, whether to try and fit more of the tail into it or not. Um, sometimes you want to keep the bases quite small around the miniature so it doesn't take up too much space on the tabletop. And sometimes you want a bit more space to do something a bit uh, decorative. Um, I like the oval bases for the uh, the T-Rex and the Parasaurolophus, so I thought that worked well. Uh, they do overhang with the tails a bit, but that's all right. Um, smaller rounder bases for the smaller, um, the Hypsilophodon, the Oviraptor and the Archaeopteryx. Um, and uh, yeah, just stick them down with the Tamiya cement and away you go really. The, uh, the bases on these dinosaurs, I was looking to do something similar to what I did for the small Triceratops that I used as a Grox in my uh, Rin's World Battle of the Farm scenario um, that I had in my previous videos. Um, because I wanted to be able to use that Triceratops uh, alongside these dinosaurs and I thought it looked like a, a nice sort of base for these to go on. Um, so that means a few little rocks, um, some texture paint, the stern and mud texture paint is what I ultimately would use. Um, that's partly for a time saving and partly because I got some of it in a set once and I want to use it and I haven't used it on anything else. But I think that'll make it a look like a nice swampy sort of base. I've also got the barbed bracken from Gay's Workshop which is on this kind of bendy plastic um, so you have to stick it down with super glue. Um, but it works pretty well um, and I think looks quite cool. Um, it, because it's bendy you can actually make it fit into gaps a little bit, push it around um, and then just give it a very simple little dry brush or a wash or something like that and it brings up the detail quite nicely um, alongside a few grassy tufts I think it looks great um, so I'm not going all out on details on these bases because I'm going to use the texture paint later um, and, and tufts uh, some of my other bases I go and do more on them but for these dinosaurs I was really going for speed and simplicity um, and I think the overall effect ends up being pretty good one of the other good things about this barbed bracken is that you can kind of layer it up so you can cut little bits off uh, shave it down and you can layer on uh, some smaller leaves on top of the leaves underneath so you can build up some quite cool looking bushes um, so I wanted to make sure that next to the crocodile, for instance, it looked like he was crawling through a swamp. I didn't want to put so much on his base that you couldn't see the detail of the model because he's very low to the ground. Um, but trying to make it seem like he was crawling through something, uh, especially because I eventually decided to go with a nice big round base. I'm glad I did because it gave me the opportunity to do something a bit more scenic and I think it worked out really well. Uh, the Parasaur Lophus, uh, I partially put the uh, the stone on his base there so he could be crawling over it um, because I thought it would look cool and also give him a bit more stability. Um, yes, he could just be walking in his hind legs and you can just glue that down with um, with the Tamiya cement and that should be fine. But I just wanted to give him a bit of extra stability, especially for being used in games um, because the contact points weren't very big on his feet. Um, the stones, I just went outside and picked a few stones out of the garden. Um, so. <clears throat> it's very easy and cheap to be able to make um, nice looking bases uh, if you just look around. Um, the smaller dinosaurs, the Oviraptor, um, the Hypsilophodon and the, uh, the T-Rex, they are all on these moulded kind of stone bases which I think looks quite nice. You could just have them like that if you wanted to. Um, but they use that so you, they peg in so they've actually got a little pegs on the bottom of their feet that go into those rocks and make them very nice and stable. And I thought they look quite cool standing on tactical rocks. Uh, that's the classic Space Marine look. Um, but yeah, they, they look quite nice and you can build up a bit of foliage around the base of the rocks which will blend it all into the um, into the base. Um, the Archaeopteryx uh, is on one of these little discs um, which is how it stands up because again it pegs into that. Um, because it's got very small claws for standing up on. Um, I didn't do anything with that at this stage, I just decided I was going to cover it with texture paint later uh, to hide the 
the sort of join between the base itself and the, the extra little base that the Archaeopteryx is on. That's something that I've done in a lot of other models where you get um, uh, models from um, different companies that have molded on bases like the Frostgrave models for instance they tend to have uh, molded on bases um, sometimes I cut them off and sometimes I just leave them on and cover them with sand or whatever so you end up with a base that's a little bit bulkier than it would be otherwise but you you don't see that sort of strange join between the flat bit and the base um, so I'm gonna leave it there for this video because um, this has actually gone on a bit longer than I, I thought it was going to to be honest um, but I really enjoyed putting these together and um, it's not taking me a long time the total build and paint time for these all together was about five hours I think because uh, I filmed basically the whole lot of it so I could uh, look back at it later um, so the next video I'll just move on to painting them and it's a real nice quick way of painting uh, to get them on the table as quickly as possible cheers uh -huh.